guys, welcome back. Welcome back to the Samsung stage. We're live on GameSpot. It's E3, it's day two, and I'm joined. I'm joined by Dave. Yes. Dave from Crytek. Dave, what are you going to show off today? Uh, today we're showing Hunt Horrors of the Gilded Age. Hunt Hor Horrors of the Gilded Age. So this was just announced quite recently, right? When did you first start talking yeah, about the game? I think a week ago, maybe. A week ago? Yeah, wow, it's brand new. Yeah, absolutely. So in, in case people watching haven't heard of it, Give us a loadout. I'm like, what is Hunt Horrors? The, Gil the Horrors of the Gilded Age. Horrors of the Gilded Age. Yeah, we'll just right. call it Hunt. We'll just call it Hunt. Sure. Okay. Tell me so, about Hunt. Yeah, Hunt's a co-op action RPG where you play a monster hunter in the late 1800s. All and, right. Uh, it's all about teaming up with friends and going out to take down big ass bosses. And really, I feel like this game almost like epitomizes all the things that are popular at E3 this year. You've got co-op, which is like everywhere. You've got big monsters, which is also you know you can evolve in various other games. That's kind of a big thing this year. And you've also got the kind of the 1800s setting, which sure. we have in the order as well. It's like, it's like you guys have seen end of the future of all the things that E3 is about and thrown them together in your game. I think we've got some gameplay to check out as well, so we'll throw that up on screen and, and maybe we can talk me through what's going on. Sure thing. But yeah. um, So what's the kind of ethos behind this game? Is it like, is it just about having fun hunting them monsters with your friends, or what's the kind of vibe you're going for? So uh, basically we wanted to make a game that was all about killing bosses. And uh, you know, we love the setting because it allowed us to have a world where there's electricity and guns and railroads, but at the same time there's also these sort of dark parts of the earth, like what you're seeing here, which is the Louisiana bio, where you could imagine these crazy creatures still exist. And a, a big aspect of the game is um, you're hunting down actual myths and folklore of the time period. So. This mission here is about killing something called the Nightmare Witch, which is actually folklore about a witch that comes to you when you're sleeping and like sits on your chest or something. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, I um, think it's about sleep paralysis. It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we exactly. uh, we basically took that idea and turned it into a boss. Ooh. And so we wanted to have all these cool touch points. So if you're like, you see something in the game, you could go on Wikipedia and go, hey, that was actually a real thing. That's pretty cool. So what's going on here? So, you, so you're starting off. Um, everyone's being very sneaky. Sure. So you're just trying to track her down. Yeah. Find so where she I is. Mean, the game's an RPG, so there's a lot of build-up and player progression and uh, development leading up to this point. But I think at this point, the players have sort of tracked down the boss, and now they're going to kill her. So who are these other enemies, then? Are they uh, these like are the, these are, we call them the Broken, but they're basically hillbillies of the swamp. And uh, one thing we definitely want to do is have a huge variety of different enemies. Um, yeah. We got these guys, we got like Voodoo Cultists, we got Undead. Um, and that's just in this area of the game. That it is actually an international monster hunting, monster hunting enterprise. So it's one way to jump through a window. That was <laughs> yeah. pretty, pretty insane. Yeah, when we put that in the game, everybody stopped using doors. Even yeah, if the yeah. window's like two inches from the door, they jumped through the window. But uh, anyway, we want to have a lot of different creature variety. And you know, this is one example of some of the creatures in the game. But everywhere you go in the game, every different area is going to have a different set of enemies to fight. This is very uh, reminds me very much of the Hills Have Eyes. Yeah, these guys are very Hills yeah. Have Eyes-ish. Yes. They're kind of like the, the twisted black magic cultists that hide out in the middle of the swamp that you don't know about. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other cool thing about the game is we wanted to get very authentic with the weaponry. Yeah. And so a lot of the weapons are very period based. You know, you got single action pistols, double action pistols, lever action rifles. You know, it's not like a modern gun where you can just clip, reload, and shoot really fast. You actually have to reload each bullet one at a time. And so it adds a cool, unique uh, pacing to the game you don't see in a lot of other games. Wow, and it's uh, quite easy to die as well. Yeah, I it's, see. <laughs> it's actually pretty deadly, and that's you know that was a big part of the game. We didn't want it to be easy. We wanted the we wanted it to be a challenge. You are fighting pretty crazy stuff, but yeah. we also wanted to work the aspect of death into the game. And uh, you'll see coming up, we have a pretty re unique respawn system, and that kind of ties into the fact that you are going to die a lot, but it's okay because there's a cool aspect to it that plays out from that. So how does each kind of uh, each encounter, each mission kind of kind of shape up? You have to track down the. Uh, the monster first, the boss first, or how yeah. Exactly? So there's actually a ton of mission types that exist outside the boss fight okay. that you play through, and during the course of that, you're kind of gathering information, um, collecting cues, clues to find out where the bosses are, so you can go hunt down and kill them. And the cool part about that is all those missions are randomly generated. So it's a random layout. The enemies are randomized. Wow. Um, the events within the missions are randomized. So every time you go in, you don't really know what's going to go on, other than hey, we're going to the swamp to kill stuff. You might stumble across some weird uh, ritual, or you might find some dark altar, or you might find some people that have been kidnapped and you need to be rescued. And so it's kind of cool. We, you know, our goal in the beginning was like, hey, we'll make this infinite adventure system where people can just play over and over again, and just cool shit happens, and it's unpredictable. So it's uh, it's looking really cute as well. It's just, this is in CryEngine, right? Yeah, this yeah. is all in CryEngine. Um, we built our own, you know, gameplay code to do all the random generation, and everything, but the graphics and everything. It's pretty nice because it's nice to have an engine with all the bells and whistles that CryEngine does. How's the how's the combat work then? The kind of melee combat. 
So the yeah. melee combat's kind of like a, a conserve ammo mechanism. You know, resources are limited in this game. You don't have infinite ammo. So it's a really big deal to find ammo, to find uh, oil for your lantern. And so the melee is something you use when you're kind of low on ammo or you want to conserve ammo. But it's actually pretty deadly. To it's deadly against the enemies, but it's also dangerous for you because you have to close up and get close. And as I said earlier, it, the enemies are pretty tough. Um, this is an example of the respawn system. So when you die, um, you actually appear somewhere on the map randomly. You might be in a coffin or hanging from a rope. <laughs> this guy appeared in a coffin. So he's actually wow. looking out through the cross and the door. He's like, get me out. Yeah, basically. And so you got to wait for one of your friends to come up That's and cool. rescue, which is pretty cool. So wh what are the best ways to work together then? What's, what's your best tactics in this game when you're, when you're so getting to the final part I mean, of this? Obviously, the enemies are really tough, so you got to stick together. Um, you get wounded in the game. This guy's actually wounded. He's going to die. But you go into a wounded state. And you're yeah. a lot slower and more vulnerable, but players can jump over and assist you and, not, and help you out of that state. Um, but a big part of the tactics is how you build your character. And one thing we want to do is we have what, it's like a flexible loadout system. You can build your own archetype. There's no defined classes. And so you can pick your weapons, the way your guy looks, and it's really, and your abilities. And so how you equip the abilities with the other groups and players in the group, it dictates the tactics. So you might bring uh, medical bags so you can help heal people. I might bring dynamite so I can blow up crazies. And, uh, you know, we have more supernatural stuff that's in the game, too, that you get from beating the bosses. So it's really about that team loadout and how you go in and tackle the fight that a lot of the co-op elements of the game come to play. Reloading. So, I mean, what, what's your, what's your kind of inspirations for this? Because, I mean, one of the, the games back in the, the GameSpot UK office, where I'm based in London, the game we play more than anything else so, like, together is Left 4 Dead 2, right? Sure. Just, just a great fun for dropping in, playing a few rounds, and then going home. I mean, are, are you going for a similar type of vibe with this game? Is, yeah, I think that, you know, we, we love co-op. You know, even we, we, a lot of us came from Darksiders and Vigil, and we always wanted to make that game yeah. four-player co-op. You know, we love Diablo, Left 4 Dead, you know, MMOs, any game. It's just fun to get there with a group of guys. And I think one of the things we definitely took from Left 4 Dead is that, like, session-based. Like, you go in, it's a 10, 20-minute mission, and then you're done, and you can do the next one. Yeah. But we wanted to build a game that was, you know, much more diverse. You got tons of different enemies. You got a whole pro RPG progression system. You have tons of cool boss fights, and so... Yeah, definitely. Doing all that together in these quick little cool burst sessions is just a lot of fun. So you get flamethrowers, you get man, you get a whole bunch of different weaponry. Yeah, the flamethrower is cool because um, one cool thing to play with is the idea of future tech in the 1880s. Yeah. Because they had flamethrowers in World War One, right? And they had yeah. automatic yeah. weapons in World War One. So we kind of imagine that, hey, yeah, you got these period 1880 weapons, but at some point, as you get better, you start to play with the future technology, which at the time is stuff that was in like the 1890s or 1910. And so it allows us to introduce some interesting weapons. Yeah, this guy was de died, and he's now hanging upside down. It's kind of cool. He sees the whole fight from his vantage point. Yeah. Pretty vulnerable. <laughs> yeah. So if you don't save him, uh, could enemies come and kill him again? Like yeah, you can die. And it's actually the game's friendly fire. You could actually kill him on the rope. Um, but the game's definitely balanced to the, where you need the other players to survive. So. Yeah. I mean, if you really wanted to, sure, you could leave him hanging. You, you, but you, so you, you could roast him right there if you wanted yeah, to. I'm not exactly. saying you should, but, but I think like he's going to save him there. Yeah, it's definitely in your best interest to help uh, save guys so that you have a full team of four players. So uh, remind me, what, what systems is, uh, is, this, is Hunt coming out on? So it's going to be on PC and next-gen consoles. PC uh, and next-gen, right, right, OK. So this is a good example. Um, there's a bunch of items in the game that aren't guns. Okay. Um, anywhere from like dynamite or a medical bag to a little more occult or fantastical things that you kind of build based on the enemies you defeat. That's just a simple one that kind of shows you where to go. Oh, that was just that was just key your path. Sure, right? yeah, okay, and that's cool. something someone would have would have chosen to bring into the fight. It's not automatic, but there's tons of different items like that. We're not talking about them now because honestly, we haven't finalized them all yet. We're yeah, only yeah. a year in. But uh, that's also a big part of the game and that loadout aspect of preparing for the battle with your friends. So this is the this is actually the boss, the Nightmare Witch. This is her uh, boss arena, so would you will. Of course, you meet her in a graveyard. Of course. <laughs> and one thing we want to do too is a lot of in the boss fights we want to encourage cooperative mechanics, and uh, uh, you'll see a pretty cool one coming up where. Uh, the Nightmare Witch actually pulls one of the players into her Nightmare Realm. And w when that happens, they're the only player that can see the witch, and no one else can. Oh, but right. if they shoot the witch, then basically everybody else can see her for a second. She kind of flashes. So that guy kind of has to shoot the witch to keep her marked so everybody else can attack. And we want to try to build those type of cooperative mechanics in the boss fights so they're not just straightforward boss fights, four guys with guns. So did you... Um for inspiration for your bosses, did you pull from like folklore and everything from yeah. this period of time? It definitely starts as folklore, and then it's you know a bunch of imagination on top of that. 
you know, because the folklores are pretty basic. It's like, hey, here's a witch that comes to you when you're sleeping and sleeps on your, lays on your chest. It's like, yeah. okay, how do we turn that into a boss fight? And uh, so, you know, there's a lot of creativity that goes on top of that. But you so can see her reappearing there because this guy's yeah, shooting Yeah, this her, guy right? in the witch mode right now, he's shooting her. And then when it switches to the other guy's view, you'll see her, like, pop in every once in a while when he hits her. And then they can, that's where they know where they are, where she is and they can hit her back back. So this is obviously taking place in the kind of, imagine the kind of hillbilly swamp type yeah, exactly. environment. Yeah. But like, what other type of places will, will you get to go and uh, uh, that's something, you know, We'll be talking about that coming up, but I mean, it's okay. definitely, you know, there's a lot of cool opportunity in the time period, because you could be anywhere yeah. from New York or London that's pretty advanced for the time period to like, you know, Romania or South America that's really backwater. So there's a lot of diversity in locales. <laughs> And I think, you know, the key here, you know, the one thing that's cool here is it's like these are ordinary guys fighting these extraordinary bosses. Yeah. They're not superheroes. They're not, you know, secret agents. They're just like dudes that picked up a shotgun and said, hey, we need to kill that witch. <laughs> She's pissing us off. Let's go take her out. But here you can see she actually pulls another one of the players in the Nightmare Realm. That's not good. That's there it. There we go. That's the Hunt Horrors of the Gilded Age. Brilliant. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, oh, if you're watching at home and you have any questions, it's because this might be the first time you've ever seen Hunt, so the best thing to do would be to tweet directly at me at CamFrazRob, and I will throw those questions straight to Dave right here. And I've, still, I've still got a couple more things I wanted to ask you. Just basically about like about the, the four-player co-op and like, sure. in fact, can you can you play with just two people, with just with three people, with yeah, one absolutely. yourself? Yeah, like, absolutely. You can play with any combination of one to four players. Okay, right. I mean, there are some like really tough bosses in the game that you're. Definitely going to want to team up with some other players. I mean, to do take they down. scale? So if you have four people and the boss is hard, yeah, or yeah. Well, the game, the, most of the game scales, but like I said, there will be like epic encounters that where you need a full contingent of four guys, or you need to be really, really good to take it down by yourself. But so I mean, we mentioned Left 4 Dead too, but what other games have, did you get to look at, or other kind of media did you look at for inspiration for? Oh man, I mean, tons of games. Left 4 Dead, Resident Evil is another great inspiration. Just the types of enemies and the pacing and that sort of thing. You know, Last of Us. I don't know. I mean, it's one of those things when you make games. You just look at everything. Yeah, it's yeah. like every Absolutely. game's built on a you mountain just, you of just games. Pick, you pick the, the your favorite bits from the other yeah, games. Yeah, absolutely. Try and, like, try but and, really, like, we wanted a game we thought was cool was this. Hey, here's a co-op game that's focused on killing bosses, and yeah. there's not really a lot of games like that, you that's know. True. So, and that was really what it was. Out. Let's make this cool assassins-based boss hunting game, and that's what we made. And why did you choose the kind of 1800s kind of time period? Like, I think again, it was just the diversity in the environments and the setting and the, the technology. It's actually a really interesting time period. You know, all kinds of crazy stuff was invented to, like, transistors and electricity and crazy stuff you wouldn't even imagine that was invented in that time period was. So it's just, it was a great, and at the same time, there's still crazy places like the swamp where nightmare witches might have hung out. And people <laughs> didn't know because they didn't have cameras or phones or anything like that. So we go witches. What are, are there any other type of bosses you can kind of tease? What other type of, you know, creatures... Well, might we be coming up against? Um, uh, you can you know, for us? I don't know. I would say you could look and if you wanted to start, you could look in Louisiana and look up folklore. And we, I think we've nailed pretty much all the major ones in that area. But yeah, there, I mean, it's that's the thing is because it's based on myths and folklore. It's they're pretty diverse. Like this case, it's a witch. Some other case, it's this weird gator creature that was mixed with a baboon. But <laughs> wow. you know, we take these basic nuggets and we turn them into cool boss fights, and that's kind of the idea behind the game. So. It, but the cool thing is there's a ton of variety in what's already out there, even cool. within existing folklore. We've actually got a few questions that have come sure. over, over Twitter. Do you mind okay. if I throw them at yeah, you? Yeah, so, um, We have, oh yes, um, Stuart Hopkins wonders, can I have three AI buddies to play with me? Uh, right now we don't have any plans for doing AI. It's, okay. you gotta, but you can play by yourself or you can play with two players or three players. So. How about the game world? How open are these areas? That's what uh, this comes from. So Sam that, really, that depends on the mission. Some of the missions, like this one's, are a little more linear, where it's more directed. Um, some of the missions do open up a little more. And again, that gets back to the random nature. You don't know. It might come in. It might be, hey, you got to get escape out of the swamp. Or you might come in and say, hey, here's a little open area with farmhouses, and you need to rescue a bunch of people that are hidden, and it's a little more open-ended. So it really varies. We wanted to create as much diversity in the experience as possible. Cool. Um, got another question as well from uh, from Blant. Brandon Blizzard, and he asks, what are some of the direct inspiration? Oh, we've kind of had this. Yeah, the, the demo had a lot. Well, he, he thinks the demo had a large Lovecraft theme. I'm not sure I know what Lovecraft is. Yeah, Lovecraft's like Call of Cathulhu, that sort of thing. Oh, Creatures right, with yes. big tentacles yeah, on yeah, their yeah. mouth. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that's definitely a huge, there. that's a huge inspiration. I will say that we will definitely have some Cthulhu-inspired creatures in the game. 
Fantastic. <laughs> Love Becky <laughs> Thule. Well, David, it's been a pleasure having you on stage, man. It's been great, it's great to chat yeah, to you. Yeah, thank you. It's great to see the game in action for me for the first time, I think, for a lot of our audience, too. So sure. best of luck with it. Hopefully we'll see it. Maybe at Gamescom. Maybe it's coming up in we'll the future. Definitely see the Gamescom. Oh, definitely see a Gamescom. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. And if people are at E3, they can go to your booth and they can they can check out that demo yeah, again. Yeah, they can they see do? the cool high-res version of that video with the great sound and everything. So. Fantastic. Okay. Well, uh, thanks very much again, man. And guys, we are going to throw over now to, um, a, some, I think, a different demo from somewhere else on the, on the show floor. Somewhere. But we will be back in this stage, as always, in about two to three minutes. So don't go anywhere, and I'll see you then.